Now, when we talk about the system, so these are the vertebrate. Although they place first into the evolution in the case of the vertebrate, but when we talk about in general about the vertebrata, we all have seen that the vertebrates they have the complete digestive system what do you mean by the complete digestive system that means the elementary canal is complete uh, what are the parts in the complete elementary canal they have the mouth buccal cavity pharynx esophagus stomach intestine rectum now see these are the major five part when we talk about the complete digestive tract so you should remember that the complete digestive tract this comprise of the mouth buccal cavity pharynx esophagus stomach intestine and rectum now see in the case of the shark the rectum opens uh, into the cloaca through the anus when we talk about the mouth, so mouth is ventral crescentric. Now we all have seen that this is one of the feature of the elasmo branchi, right? Uh, when we talk about the osteostis, the mouth is pre uh, present in front, but in the case of the elasmo branchi or all the cartilaginous fish, their mouth is preferably present at the ventral side. So here in this case, uh, the mouth is also present at the ventral side. This is a very classical example of the Lesmo branchi class that you should remember and their mouth opening is guarded by the upper and lower lips. What are the name of the upper and lower lips? Can anyone tell me? Yes. This is the maxilla. Do you remember when we were talking about the practical part that time we will have discussed? Now, <clears throat> these uh, lips are nothing but the fold of the integument. Now, when we talk about the buccal cavity, so their buccal cavity leads into the spacious dorsal ventrally compressed buccal cavity. It is uh, they have the border with the jaws. Now, uh, can anyone tell me about their teeth? The buccal cavity they have the thick mucous membrane. Can uh, anyone tell me which type of teeth they have? Come on fast. The teeth of shark are <coughs> modified placoid scale and they are homodone. See, whatever things are not added in the slide that you should not forget. Understand each and every part you should remember, especially such important features you should remember. These are very, very important and that can be asked as MCQ. It is ventrally into the thick fold. It is for uh, they have a so called tongue which is non muscular, non glandular. Now, see when we talk about the tongue, so we all have seen that um, uh, the tongue is uh, having lots many mucus gland, it is muscular and it is glandular. In our case, now they have lot many taste but and all. But when we talk about the shark. So their buccal cavity is a bit raised and uh, they just form a thick fold. So it is the so-called uh, non-muscular tongue and non-glandular and non prostrusible Then when we talk about the teeth, so just now I told you that they have uh, teeth which are modified, this modified scales and which are of homodone. Their teeth are sharp because see the animal is highly uh, carnivores and they are very good predator so what is the property of a predator that their strong jaws their strong teeth so their teeth are very sharp more or less compressed cusps the edges of which are smooth and non serrated and uh, we have only single line of the teeth in our mouth right but when we talk about the shark so their teeth are arranged in layers many layers are present many lines are present so they are all alike in shape homodone they are born into the several parallel rows inner margin of the upper and lower jaws they are not attached to the jaws cartilage understand uh, if we will see our teeth so these are embedded inside the jaw but in case of the shark, their teeth are not like that. Their uh, teeth are not embedded inside the cartilage. They are just simply embedded in the 
skin of the jaw like we all have to talk about its scales are pelecoid um, scales we have seen that this placoid scales are embedded in the skin so seen happen in the mouth also that teeth are nothing but the modified placoid scale only so these are just embedded inside the skin the teeth are used to catch the prey and they prevent the scape but not to crush it they there are no such glands into the buccal cavity comparable to the salivary gland of higher vertebrates when we talk about the higher vertebrates so even in some invertebrate also we'll have seen that they have the special salivary gland so here they are lacking that thing the buccal cavity merges posteriorly with the large pharynx which is lined by the endoderm the pharynx are of either lateral side bears the internal opening of the sparicles and five vertical internal gill slits of gill pouch the cavity of pharynx if you will observe it is lined with the mucous membrane and containing the numerous dermal denticles next part of the digestive system is esophagus the pharynx narrow posteriorly to form the short and wide esophagus esophagus has thick muscular wall with an internal lining of the mucous membrane which is raised into the longitudinal fold and we see their stomach so uh, what happened that the stomach see there is no uh, marking there is a continuation of one part to the other so that esophagus will be wide enough into its posterior and it is going to form a large muscular stomach so this stomach band on itself so because of that band it's just give a j-shaped uh, organ and a long wider proximal limb which is called as the cardiac stomach while the short narrow distal limb is called as the pyloric stomach at the junction of the cardiac and pyloric limbs there is a blind outgrowth you can see the blind sac and the sphincter wall sphincter wall uh, are the special wall uh, which is helping to uh, prevent the back flow of the food now esophagus it, it, esophageal opening into the cardiac stomach is guarded by the esophageal wall like esophagus in the mucous lining of the cardiac stomach is also thrown into the prominent longitudinal fold at the end of the depression of the blind sac end of the pyloric stomach is muscular bursa intiana the opening of the pyloric stomach into the bursa intiana is guarded by the circular band of the muscle fiber and this uh, fiber are called as the pyloric valve when we talk about the intestine so the bursa intiana that continues into the intestine you have to remember these things into the lung only understand then intestine is wide tube running straight backward into the abdominal cavity and its middle region like cardiac stomach into the diameter when we talk about the end part so it narrows at the anterior part that receives the bile and the pancreatic duct the internal mucus lining uh, it is lining student lining of the intestine is folded anti clockwise and see uh, they just give a spring like structure and this fold is called as the scroll wall this helps for the peristaltic movement of the food inside the intestine scroll wall is not only uh, helping to increase the extent of the absorptive surface but also prevents the rapid flow of the food into the intestine now see when we talk about increasing the fold of the intestine because see to increase the area of the absorption they are provided with the scroll wall we also have such type of modification can anyone tell me that our intestinal surface if they bring the villi villi are the finger like projection which comes up the epithelial cell of the intestine which helps into the absorption as well as increasing the area of the intestine so this we all have seen about this that they have the pyloric stomach and below just move first part is the pyloric stomach now uh, opening what is the opening of that yes we have seen the pyloric stomach ke upar kya rahega cardiac stomach will be there then 
pyloric stomach will be there then thereafter there is a pyloric wall pyloric wall it can narrows down and continues as the intestinal wall intestinal wall will be having two opening one is uh, of the bile duct as well as the pancreatic duct then inside the intestine you will have seen that there is a membranous scroll wall this is the scroll wall intraintestinal arteries are there then there is a rectal gland is present this rectal uh, valve opening is there then you can see here is the urinary papilla and the opening of the uterus small intestine now here spiral wall is shown how the spiral wall is present inside the small intestine it is present into the anti clockwise uh, direction and it helps into the increasing the surface area now last part of the <coughs> elementary canal is the rectum so this rectum is short and narrow which is the last part of the elementary canal the tubular rectal or cecal gland opens dorsally into the rectum now the function of this rectal gland is not known rectum opens into the cloaca through the anus into the cloaca it also there is a opening of the urinogenital duct now we have already discussed about the uh reproductive system you all have seen that the reproductive system is of the urinogenital type right glands of the elementary canal these are also called as the digestive gland these are the liver and pancreas liver rectal gland and spleen liver is elongated yellowish gland which consists of two lobes which extends backward along the greater part of the abdominal cavity as you will cut open the animal you will find that the liver is occupying the major of the portion then these two lobes unite anteriorly that means at the upper side and attached to the septum transversum by a ligament but the remaining part uh if you will see that means at its posterior end these are the separated right lobe of liver is carries a v shaped thin wall sac gall bladder now what is the function of the gall bladder it stores the bile which is secreted by the liver gall bladder communicates with anterior end of the intestine through the bile duct in full grown specimen bile duct is about 3 cm and the liver produces bile which stores the glycogen and fat when we talk about the pancreas so pancreas is compact bile duct gland which is situated at the angle between the cardiac and the pyloric stomach we all have seen that the stomach is having two part na no? one is the pyloric and one is the cardiac the anterior part is the cardiac stomach the posterior part is the pyloric stomach and there is a blind sac so at that particular side the pancreas are situated it comprises a long dorsal lobe which is running parallel to the posterior part of the cardiac stomach and the ventral lobe lying closely to the pyloric stomach so this pancreatic duct open into the intestine just opposite to the opening of the bile duct rectal gland or cecal gland it is short hollow diverticulum which arise from the dorsal wall of the rectum now uh, if you will observe this gland it is richly vascularized and it form of the lymphoid tissue it discharges a fluid into the intestinal lumen but the physiological effect of this particular fluid is unknown just to next gland the most important gland is the spleen it is a large lymphoid organ lymphoid organ uh, we will have seen these are the organ immune organ which is attached with the cardiac and the pyloric stomach it produces it produces the lymphocytes thus has no physiological relation with the elementary canal basically its function is of uh, immunological type only so here we end with the digestive system